first got involved in downtown Fort Collins when a friend and I, Carrie Hewitt, decided we were going to open a houseware store. I was a theoretical mathematician, and he was an ag engineer. And so we had no retail background. He was quite good at woodworking. We thought we could do a woodworking shop. We were going to open a store. We didn't know what exactly it was going to be. But we decided on a houseware store because it had a relatively small entry cost. We shopped all over looking at places to put it. We looked at Greeley, a shopping center there, downtown Greeley, downtown Loveland. And Fort Collins had an opening in the Northern Hotel of about 750 square feet. Had a store selling pottery, baskets, and wooden spoons. And that's what we did. Very sincere concerned people suggested to us that downtown was not a good place to put your money. In 1972, we saw the Foothills Fashion Mall was opening, and all of a sudden we saw empty places all around us. 30% of the retail spaces were open downtown. Downtown was laid out when railroad and horse and buggy and pedestrian transportation modes were commonplace. There were all sorts of storm drainage deficiencies, inadequate electricity, inadequate sewer, inadequate water. There weren't a lot of restaurants, there were a few bars, there were no trees on the street, it was not pedestrian friendly. It was pretty bleak. Downtown was dying. People downtown were concerned about how they were going to survive. The downtown needed to have some financial tools to help property owners uh, with the revitalization of the property. DDAs are one of two entities in Colorado that are allowed to use tax increment financing. Essentially it is the incremental difference between the property tax liability before improvements are made to a property and the property tax liability after the improvements are made. And the difference between those two is the tax increment. We use tax increment to invest in public improvements in the downtown area. In 1981, the DDA boundary was established by a vote of residents, building, and business owners. Today, the district contains a little over 2% of the commercial zone land in the city and generates over 14% of the city's sales tax revenues. The big project that the DDA cut its teeth on was Old Town Square. There was new interest in preserving the buildings that represented the history of Fort Collins. Gene Mitchell, a developer, became interested in downtown, bought eight or ten old properties that were historically significant. Gene Mitchell needed $14 million to do the public improvements in the plaza itself. And it was decided that the private developer would raise the money for the renovation of the existing buildings and the construction of the new infill buildings and that the Downtown Development Authority would build the first parking structure on Mountain Avenue to accommodate the parking needs of the new development. So it was truly a public-private partnership. Construction started in 83, I think it was, and we had to be done in a year to meet the financing uh, requirements. And so we had to work really quickly. There were, truthfully, some people that thought that Gene Mitchell was uh, foolish, that it was gonna be a big flop. Just as we were finishing up, we had one of our many SNL problems. Uh, sadly, Gene lost a lot of money on it. It was what I call a, a economic success and a financial failure. But we got it built, and it set a standard for downtown. It gave confidence to other property owners that this was a good place to invest in both property and in businesses. The, the different categories of projects we get involved in include historic rehabilitation, also qualified affordable housing. Uh, projects that uh, a lot of people might be familiar with include Old Town Lofts, um, the Mawson Block, the location of Home State Bank. Other projects include Pine Street Lofts, Cortina Lofts. We get involved in very small storefront uh, renovations as well. My name is Ellen Zabel, and my husband and I own the Perennial Gardener and Sense of Place. This is our 15th Christmas, so we've been in business 14 and a half years. 
When we bought the buildings, it was stuck in the 70s, and it was just really unattractive. Money was tight, but we knew that we had to do some things to address the outside of the building. The DDA partnered with us to help get the facade done. They have a standard for downtown, and if you're willing to meet or exceed that, you may be able to get financial incentive for that, and that was huge. There are more than 60 buildings that the Downtown Development Authority has partnered with those owners to help finance the improvements to those facades, and it's made a significant impact on the appearance of the downtown. That doesn't mean we want a cookie cutter and everything all the same, because we certainly don't, but there needs to be a quality and consistency so that we all benefit from that. Our involvement with the DDA goes back to when this building was still partially condemned back in the early 70s after a fire. When funding partners approached them in terms of being able to address a housing need in the uh, downtown market, we looked at ways in which we could incorporate the commercial, uh, maintain that vitality, give that street flavor, but more importantly, we've been able to bring residents to the area. Folks that are over 55 years old that, that have very low incomes. When I moved to Colorado, I moved to be closer to a daughter. I became ill, and it's wonderful to live here because you can live here on your income, you know, when you don't have an awful lot of income. You can walk to the library, you can walk to the grocery stores. I think we have a lot of nice people, and we have a mezzanine where we can meet if we want. Uh, we wanted to make this a public space so that people could feel uh, comfortable coming inside and, and actually enjoying this great old building with the stained glass and Art Deco. And in order to do that, we required a, uh, roughly $14 million. This is the, the piece of the building that was not eligible for other financing. Certainly, this could not have been possible without the participation of the DDA. And a lot of communities, unfortunately, don't have uh, the tools that a DDA offers. A project that is going to generate tax increment, a lot of that incentive can be left on the table and then used by the DDA to invest in, in the public projects that people really get excited about, like the Alley Enhancement Program. We are Russell Mills Studios. We've done a master plan for an integrated network of alley walkways. What that entails is taking existing alleys and turning them into shared viable places and spaces. This was the DDA's um, effort to turn a really mundane, dirty, um, utilitarian alleyway into a beautiful public space. And that sort of poses a lot of challenges. How do we combine people in spaces that cars and trucks would be using? There have already, already been two pilot alleys uh, have been constructed, Trimble and Tenning Court, and they're pedestrian only. And these ones are going a little step further. These areas that were probably areas that you didn't want to visit and walk through, not because it was dangerous, because, but because it wasn't a pleasant environment. Now, as you walk through some of these re renovated alleyways, they have almost a European feel to them. And where we can actually create these environments where people, pedestrians, can use them using human scale elements like um, pedestrian lighting, Tivoli lighting, benches, pavement materials using pavers as opposed to asphalt. Building owners have now taken to enhancing the back facades of their buildings to access these new alleyways. As I bring my family in the downtown area, we make it a point to walk through the alleyways because they're such special, very unique spaces. We've developed a master plan to connect to the Mason Corridor, it will connect to Old Town, it will connect the River District and all these destinations through alleyways to the university. And the DDA is an organization that can help implement unique projects that otherwise probably couldn't be realized through city funds. The other way that we invest tax increment is directly with a private development project. This project is the Lofts at Magnolia at Fort Collins. The overall project consists of three commercial units, 18 residential units, and uh, one of the key components of this was uh, bringing in the Downtown Development Authority and being a part of this project from the beginning. Everything on that street facade that is facing Magnolia needed to meet the requirements of the DDA. We really spent a lot of time on making it blend in with its surroundings. They wanted the growth, they wanted the quality development, and they were willing to step in and help us make that happen. 
Every time you walk through Old Town Square, you're walking past uh, many of the DDA's investments. Through Oak Street Plaza, that was a partnership with uh, the city of Fort Collins. In the future, you'll be uh, riding in the uh, Mason Corridor bus rapid transit project, and that will have been partially funded with some DDA funds. The DDA also committed a total of $3 million to the future Fort Collins Museum Discovery Science Center project, a once-in-a-generation kind of project. They've really dialed in what kinds of projects they're looking for, how they're going to help those projects succeed. The Downtown Development Authority has truly helped the downtown area to remain vibrant in a very, very challenging environment where there's a lot of pressure to move out into the I-25 corridor. They want to work with property owners and want to work with the community. If we didn't have such a great historic downtown, we'd be any town USA. You could pick us up and put us anywhere, but this is what makes us really unique. It's resulted in what by all accounts is a very healthy, robust downtown, a fun place to be and a good place to invest money.